Good morning. Today we'll be investigating simple harmonic motion. And specifically, we'll be paying attention to the graphs you see there. So our primary objective is to understand the conditions required for simple harmonic motion. Specifically, we'll be investigating the type of forces that are required for simple harmonic motion. Secondary objective is to understand the energy changes that occur during a cycle of motion. Specifically, we'll be looking at kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. So before we look at the conditions for simple harmonic motion, we'll be reviewing some terms and graphs. The position time graph seen here represents simple harmonic motion, in this case for the spring mass system we saw at the beginning of the video. Notice the motion is repetitive. What I've highlighted there represents one cycle. In total, there seems to be just about five cycles of motion, and five cycles of motion is approximately equal to eight seconds, as circled there. And so one cycle of motion is approximately 1.6 seconds. That's shown there. The time required to complete one cycle of motion is called the period. Notice that for simple harmonic motion, the period does not change. Examples of simple harmonic motion include the spring mass system we see here, moving back and forth. The spring mass system here, seen oscillating up and down. And notice there is a formula that can be used to predict the spring constant based on the mass and the period. And another example of simple harmonic motion is the pendulum seen swinging here. That formula can be used to predict the acceleration due to gravity. So what do these three examples all have in common? Well, what they have in common is the type of forces acting on them. For simple harmonic motion to occur, the net force must act in the direction opposite to the displacement. Net force must be proportional to the distance from equilibrium and the forces of friction or drag must be negligible. So let's just explore those three conditions. First off, the term equilibrium. Equilibrium represents the position of the system when it is at rest. Net force acts in a direction opposite to the displacement. So what does that mean? So in this case, when the gingerbread man, the mass, is towards the right of the equilibrium, the net force acts towards the left. This is the spring force. The spring force always pulls the object back towards equilibrium. Net force must be proportional to the distance from equilibrium. What does this mean? Well, if we use the symbol x to represent the distance from equilibrium to the center of mass of the object, in this situation, for a spring force, recall that the force is given by the formula, or the expression, k times x, where k is called the spring constant. So for springs, this satisfies the condition that the net force must be proportional to the distance from equilibrium, as it's given by the formula, spring constant multiplied by x, the distance from equilibrium. Now for a pendulum, the equilibrium position is shown there. And this condition is valid when the maximum distance from equilibrium is small in comparison to the length of the pendulum. In other words, it's valid when the angle is very small. In addition, for simple harmonic motion to occur, the forces of friction and drag must be negligible. And so these are the three conditions for simple harmonic motion to occur. Net force acts in a direction opposite to the displacement. Net force must be proportional to the distance from equilibrium. 
and the forces of friction or drag must be negligible. Next, we are going to explore our secondary objective, which is to understand the energy changes that occur during a cycle of motion. Specifically, we'll be focusing on kinetic energy, spring potential energy, and the total energy. Total energy is the sum of kinetic plus potential. Let's see that in action here. Notice when spring potential energy is maximum. And also notice when kinetic energy is a maximum. And so let's focus our attention on the position of the spring mass system. When we're at maximum extension, as circled there, we have maximum potential energy. This is because at maximum extension, the speed of the object is zero. Therefore, the kinetic energy is zero. Next, we're at equilibrium. Notice the spring potential energy is zero. By definition, if a spring is not extended or compressed, it cannot store spring potential energy. And that's a situation when we're at equilibrium. At equilibrium, we have maximum speed, therefore we have maximum kinetic energy. Now we're at the point of maximum compression. At maximum compression, the speed is zero, therefore the kinetic energy is zero, therefore spring potential energy is at a maximum. And now we're back at equilibrium, where we have zero spring potential energy, Therefore, the kinetic energy is a maximum. And we get back to maximum extension, where we have zero kinetic energy because the speed is zero, and the spring potential energy is a maximum. These two graphs accurately predict the kinetic energy and the spring potential energy during a single cycle. The yellow dashed lines are showing when the object is at the equilibrium position. Notice kinetic energy is a maximum and spring potential energy is zero. The red lines represent the position of the object when it's either at a maximum extension or maximum compression. Notice the kinetic energy is zero at these points. Throughout the cycle, total energy remained constant. Now earlier on I discussed a formula based on simple harmonic motion for the pendulum. Acceleration due to gravity is given by that expression. If you're interested in seeing how you can apply that formula to measure the acceleration due to gravity in a mini lab experiment, please watch this video. Similarly, I gave you a formula based on simple harmonic motion for a spring mass system. This formula can be used to determine the spring constant and it's given by that expression there. If you want to see an experiment that can be done to measure the spring constant, please watch this video here. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.